Hello, how are you today? The scene is a little bit dark, but it basically shows what this tutorial is going to be about. It's not so much going to be about character animation, but about cartoon rendering. And there's a very old paradigm in Maya where you can render toonish animations, and that's what I used here. It's called Maya Vector and you find it under the render settings as one of the non-default render settings. Arnold is the default renderer, of course, and with Arnold you can shade things similar to this, uh, but um, the straightforward way is uh, the classic way using the Maya vector renderer. Uh, you see the outlines of the body and of the block where he steps on to, and you have a two-color shading which I uh, placed onto the geometry here so, so the renderer doesn't render three colors or four colors and not only one color which would show as a pretty flat character but two colors so we have all kinds of different render settings we can choose and this is what we achieved and I'll show you the way how to get there uh, including the import of the, of the character the rigging the animation and uh, the camera movement which is quite elegant uh, actually we haven't covered camera motions much in the previous tutorials but here you see a camera which is always focused on the object on the moving object uh, and rotating smoothly around him so let's get started in order to render a tune animation we need geometry and an animation and uh, for just the mood of the day, I go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. In the Content Browser, I have under Modeling, here's the Modeling section, several bipeds. And bipeds, uh, hands are not exactly bipeds, but they belong to bipeds. And for example, let's uh, choose the character obese Maya. To, uh, just drop it into the scene. Now, uh, this a unit here is supposed to be one square meter. At least that's important in um, simulations and dynamics. Uh, for example, the bullet sol solver works with this unit, one meter here. <clears throat> so our object is far too large, so we scale him down. And now let's see if he's almost two meters high should be more or less like this. Maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah. Okay. In order to animate him, uh, we will rig him. And you find this under rigging here, and skeleton, and quick rig. Alternatively, you might find it here. Uh, here's the quick rig tool. Let's choose quick rig and we do it with one click. It's a pretty simple character in terms of rigging. Arms, legs, auto rig. Maya doesn't have to think a lot here. And it provides us within a few seconds with the basic uh, locators here to animate that object. For example, the hip goes that, like this. This is inverse kinematics. You move one uh, locator and the rest sort of tries to follow it or adjust. So um, when we go to the render settings now, here are the render settings. We have the Arnold renderer as the default renderer, which is good. We love Arnold, but we uh, select Maya Vector in this case by Ravix. It's been with Maya for a long time, as I said before. And uh, if we render the scene now, we click here, and this is what we get. We get the outline of that obese person, which is fine. We can modify the render settings, of course, and uh, well, actually we can do this right now. Go to the render settings, and here under Maya Vector, we choose maybe two colors. What does that look then like then? That's the two color look. That's good for now. Let's stay or stick to this here. So um, our, our person is sitting in the scene and uh, actually we have a light. Uh, it's a default light. Uh, the vector renderer 
needs light and it only accepts a point light. We could put a point light into the scene, but the default light is just fine for this experiment. Now let's create a box and move it in front of him and scale it down and move it up to the ground. So that's where it is. And let's give it a nice shader, a new material. And in this case, we'll go for a Lambert. And the Lambert should have the color red. So we have a skin colored character and a red box. If we render the scene, we have to re-render it. It looks like this, just fine. Now let's animate the uh, creature. Uh, I want him to step onto that block here. And he does that in maybe how many seconds? I, I, I'm not a specialist here, but uh, maybe two seconds or so. Two seconds would be um, 50 frames, but we make it in slow motion. We take things slowly. So let's uh, give him a little bit of thinking time before he actually uh, walks onto that block. And let's start at frame 25, which is one second. I set a keyframe here using the key S. That's where he starts his motion. Now, he probably goes like this a little bit. And then I set the next keyframe. That's the motion I have. And of course, I have to check the the legs and under this tab here I find the legs or I can grab the legs in this case it's the right leg well that's fine I need to set a keyframe here in order to place it to uh, start with uh, the placement here and then I move the uh, leg up here like this he probably won't, yeah, he will place it here at the border of the of the block. And here I set the next keyframe. Let's check what we have. The hips move forward, the legs moves, the right leg moves forward, and that's okay. Of course, we have a penetration thing here, which we don't care about right now. Now, uh, in the second um, step, he will actually lift himself up like this and forward and I think we can set the next keyframe here so that's what he does up and higher and while he does that that movement he needs to balance his body out um, with this leg this leg let's place it here, set a keyframe, the leg will be extended to the back because he needs to balance his body out. Maybe like this. So let's set another keyframe. Now we've keyed both legs and the hip. Whoops. And now he'll rest it back there. Set another keyframe and then move it over here. Set another keyframe, and of course we have to adjust the the hip now. The hip is at that position right now, and a little bit later we have the hip here. And then we straighten him up like this. So the animation is done. We could modify it, um, of course. This is uh, not really elegant, uh, but uh, it's it's basically how character animation works. We have anticipation a little bit, so he doesn't start right away, and uh, we need much more to balance it out here. So um, finally, before we render, we create uh, a ground. Actually, we won't create a ground. We create a big box where this whole thing takes part in. That's the box. I move it up. I 
like this. And uh, I click right mouse click, uh, delete the face here, delete the face here, and delete the face here. So we have sort of a box and we create a new, sh a new material, assign new material, and it will be a blin. And I guess it's shaded on the other side, so we have to reverse the surface. So we go to modeling and we have mesh display and we have reverse here. So now the gray is here and our creature is here. And we have construction history here and construction is happening outside of my studio building here which I don't care about really. So this is the animation we have. We render it again. So this is what we get. Uh, a few odd shadows. It depends on where the default uh, point light sits. Now let's change the render settings a little bit. We go to this icon and uh, let's go for four colors and we want shadows. I wonder where they come from and no reflections in this case uh, but we include edges, uh, hairline edges uh, which uh, should be a little bit thicker than just a hairline. So if we render it now, shadows are not supported by this uh, spotlight. Okay, we can uncheck the um, this. And maybe four colors is not that pleasing. Let's go back to two colors. That looks nice. So we have the outlines here, the edges here, uh, and the character, so he looks really cartoonish. Now we need a camera and I want to show you uh, a camera which is really elegant. There are s three types of cameras in Maya and they are all found here under create because we create something, not a light, a camera. And we have camera, camera and aim, camera, aim and up. Uh, actually we have more cameras like the stereo camera. I think there was a t tutorial, I, I did one um, a couple of months ago about stereo cameras. Anyway, we go for a camera and an aim because we want the camera always to look at our character and that's the aim. So here in the outliner you see a camera group. That's the camera here and that's the aim. If we just uh, open this group, we see the camera and the aim. You see? And um, let's move the camera a little bit back and pick the, the aim and check what the camera is doing now when we move the aim. The camera follows that point here and we place that point onto our character here in, in the scene. Maybe next to the belly because that's sort of the center of the animation like, like, like this. So the camera looks up to him now. Um, we choose the, for example, top view in order to look through that camera. That is the hotbox, which uh, you always uh, reach via pressing and holding the spacebar. So panels, perspective, camera. So that's what the camera currently sees. And in order to actually uh, see what's going to be rendered with the current render settings, which you find here, of course, you go to view and camera settings and let uh, the viewport sh show you the resolution gate. That's what the camera actually sees. For example, when you render this frame, it won't see the box. Doesn't matter really, because we start uh, in a different way anyway. Um, so let's go to the start of the animation. And I think we can just place the camera here, down here. Select the camera because we're animating the camera and set a keyframe here. Now he's moving up and while he's moving up we're moving up too to the side like this and set another keyframe and now he's balancing out his body and then we stop the camera motion here. So our camera motion is like this 
and you see the aim is placed in his belly that's why we have such a smooth camera motion okay let's go to this frame and render it You see, this is much different from what we see here. It's because it's rendering the perspective view. So we need to go here, render the camera one. And here he is. That's what we have. If we want the outlines to be a little bit thicker or thinner, we go to render settings and include edges and make them maybe size one, which makes them thinner. You see, much thinner now. I actually prefer them a little bit wider. Um, and we have uh, presets here oh, we can, which we can choose so like this. And we can average the color if we like. Like this we get a very flat thing. Uh, we can have an area gradient. I don't know if this does any change it does in fact it looks quite nice really but I stick I think to the two color version and I will render this thing now we go to common because that's a common thing independent of the current render uh, algorithm the common settings um, needs um, one thing which is most important that's that point are we rendering a frame or an animation? No, we are rendering an animation in this case, not a single frame. So uh, we're rendering name and number and extension with a frame padding of four, which means frame five will be called um, so-and-so dot zero 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 five, which is fine, doesn't matter really. And now we have to uh, tell Maya what uh, frame range to render. 1 to 10 is a little bit too short, but I think at 110 our animation is finished. So that's what we have. And uh, I think the size is quite okay. Uh, the size is here, 960 to 540, just for demonstration reasons. Uh, you can have the presets here. And we render not the perspective camera, but the camera one. That's all. And now we go to render. And here under render, you can batch render this scene. And uh, it's a student version, so we must not use it commercially or whatever. And that's the warning we get. And we start the rendering process. You see, it starts down here. And you can do anything you like in Maya. You can even quit Maya. The rendering won't stop unless you stop it by going to render and um, cancel batch render. So rendering with Maya vector which uh, gives us a good feeling and now it's starting to render frame 1, 2. It's already at frame 13, 14 and it's rendering if files and we, when we play them back we use F check like always which is just straightforward hope you enjoyed this and uh, do a better character animation than I did <laughs>